Irmãos, a paz do Senhor Jesus. Brethren, peace the Lord Jesus. We are going to begin the service of praise and worship unto our Lord. And so we may begin the service. We are going to make conduct a prayer, a prayer of invocation, where we're going to plead by the power of the lies and the blood of Jesus. You that are a member of the church and accustomed to this experience of the pleading, I invite you to kneel or stand according to what is more convenient at your home. You that watch us for the first time, you that are visiting us. And for us, it's a great joy to have you as a visitor. You may follow us in this gesture, if you wish, or remain how you are. We are at this moment going to pray unto our Lord. Lord, we plead by the power of the lies and the blood of Jesus, because, Lord, you have taught us through your word that through the blood of Jesus poured upon our lives, our sins are, have been forgiven, and our garments, our spiritual garments, have been cleansed. And we start to have the condition given by you to enter into your presence And Lord, we ask that this service may not only be a transmission, but Lord, we ask that it be a blessing for all of those that are participating of it. That is why we ask, by the power that lies in the blood of Jesus, insert us into your presence, grant us an intimate fellowship with your Holy Spirit, and grant us the blessing that you have reserved For each and every one of us tonight, we ask you that for this blessing, in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. The church may be seated, and we're going to begin by praising our Lord. We're going to worship Him. It's a moment that the Holy Spirit is operating in each heart, in each person, in all of those which are participating of this event. The Spirit of the Lord. Speaks to his church. I shall come to rapture my redeemed. That were washed in the blood of the Lamb. blood of Jesus the Son. Soon I shall come. I am at the door and knock. And if you open up the door, I shall enter. And I shall fulfill my promise. And a redeemed you shall be. This is the cry of victory. We shall see the King of Glory. We shall see Jesus the King that died upon the cross resurrected bringing the sinner life soon Christ shall return and he who overcomes shall inherit all things And I shall be his God, and he shall be my son. Words are faithful and true. This is the proclamation, the cry of victory. We shall see the King of glory. We shall see Jesus the King. 
that died upon the cross, but resurrected, bringing the sinner life. The Spirit of the Lord speaks to his church. Jesus shall return. The living lamb. Jesus will soon return. Blessed be the name of the Lord, this wonderful God that visits us, that is here and there where you're at, participating in the service, operating in our lives, and blessing us. Let us continue to praise the Lord. Let us continue to worship his name. And at this moment, we're going to sing a song with our children, children and adolescents, those that have a fundamental part in the day-to-day -day life of the church. And together with us, at this moment, are going to praise the Lord. Jerusalem, city of my king, every day I yearn to be there. And I shall contemplate the face of our Lord, He who gave His life for me. I shall never see death, because I shall reach eternal life when I gave my heart to Jesus. I shall not see death, for eternal life I have reached when I gave my heart to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are heading towards the meditation of the word of the Lord tonight, which shall be given by Pastor Gildo Chigueros, which is the president of Maranatha Christian Church, and shall transmit from the Lord a message to our hearts. But before, let us sing another song unto the Lord. And in sequence, Pastor Gildo Chi will bring a word for us and shall conduct the service. The time has come to think of the heavenly things, leaving behind this evil world with all its sins. Think of the heavenly things which draw us near to the kingdom of God. Think of the heavenly things that draw us closer to the kingdom of God. Oh, seek the blessings of the Lord. Trust in His great love. The signs are declaring what Jesus spoke about. Christ will pour upon us with the heavenly gift of, of the consolation. Christ will come and put upon us the gift of consolation. As it was in the day of Noah, when the flood ravished everything. Also, like in the day of Gomorrah, where the fire consumed everything. For there was no agony, like in this day of the Lord, there was no agony, like in the day of the Lord. O oh, seek the blessings of the Lord, trust in His great love. The signs are declaring that what Jesus spoke about. Come to Christ and he shall pour upon you the, the heavenly gift of consolation. 
Come to Christ, and He shall pour upon you the spiritual gift of consolation. I invite the brethren to read together with me the text, which is in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 6 to 10. Let us read together this text of the Word of the Lord. I invite the church to open up the Bible in the Gospel of John 3, verse 6 to 10. Are you ready, everybody? Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes and where it goes. So everyone who is born of the Spirit, Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and you do not know these things? Brethren, the teaching of the word is very clear here. The first observation in the text was when Nicodemus went to speak to Jesus in the evening. Look at this. Let us start to see the differences. What is the religious mind and what is the project of the Lord? Nicodemus, he had a religious mind. And in his religious mind, in the evening, it was the best time. Would not be before those of his same religion. He was stuck in his way of serving God. But also in the same manner with his his fathers and brethren of his religion. So at night, when it was dark, it was best for him because he could walk and nobody would know it was him that was seeking something that was from his soul. He needed that. It was a need. So that's the first thing. The second thing in this aspect between that what the religious mind thinks and that what the project of God has, he starts to speak about Jesus. He makes a lot of flattering remarks about Jesus. You know how to speak well. You're a man of God. Look at this. These are the flattering things of religion. And he's talking to Jesus about that. He's speaking the same, the best way he can to Jesus, and that's, that's fine. But that was not the purpose of Jesus. The purpose of Jesus was another. When he refers himself to Jesus, when he speaks to Jesus, his mind is from his religion. So what he thought? He thought, it is not this what you're thinking. Jesus did not say this. Jesus was direct. In, in the whole talk, he just spoke about the necessity or the need that he needed to change his life. People many times want to change their thoughts. Now I'm going to change my thoughts. I'm going to change my mind. And Jesus did not say for him to move his mind, change his mind or, or religion. What Jesus, what Jesus had had nothing to do with religion. He was not preaching a religion. 
He was not making a propaganda of God or himself. He was speaking about a project of eternal life. And he knew that the religious mind of Nicodemus was for this life. And he, as a spiritual leader, which knew the word, knew it very well. He was a doctor of the law. He was a doctor in Bible, in theology, more than any other people around them. More than any person. So, the understanding of the Bible as a book does not mean anything, because the project of eternal life did not was not found in his reason or the things he lived or thought. He lived of religious rites, suppositions, in aspects which were philosophical, theologic, and they were very good at it. So, in the life of Nicodemus, He had a huge, extensive knowledge of cultural, and he was a doctor of the law. Like today, we have a lot of doctors of the law, which know a lot of things regarding the history of the Bible. But Nicodemus, his reasoning did not help him to understand the results of his religion. His problem was here on earth. His worry was with his his worldly life, how he could do a wonderful service, how he could better his, his rights, his religious rights, a way to position himself, maybe the way he could put himself, and how he could convince but Jesus did not wait for him to say all this. Jesus was direct and says, Look, my friend, Dr. Nicodemus, you need to be born again. And Nicodemus said, How, how am I going to go into my mother's womb? Look at his religious mind. He thought, Man, to accept what Jesus was saying, he had to go into the mother's womb. It was an absurd. The only religion can understand. It was not it was pure re reason and that's what religion brings irrationality. Nicodemus had a good religion because he had everything. He had culture, he was a doctor of law, he knew the Bible. He was an interesting man and he knew he knew Jesus. But look, brethren, from the moment, from this moment on, Jesus gave him the message, you need to be born again from water and spirit. He said, how is this? What is this? This is news for me. And that's exactly what Nicodemus said, because it's, it's a clash between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus had a new covenant a new covenant which was not a religious pact. It was not something that had to be done hidden, that you had to be ashamed of. It was a pact of life, eternal life. And at Nicodemus, he said, oh, you got to explain this to me. And Jesus said, well, listen to one thing. You, you're thinking like a master. You are a master in Israel, a master in religion, and you do not know this? You don't know what salvation is? You don't know what eternal life is? You don't have this experience? He knew how to explain everything. He knew how to speak about the Trinity. Like today, we see a lot of this. People explain things very well. Jesus does this, does that. At the time to live the practice, what the word says. Religion 
knows how to, to flatter Jesus in terms of their words, but cannot do it by their actions. You must be thinking, you're from God. You're a man of God. Nobody can do what you're doing if you're not of God. People like to hear that. And the truth is, the answer was, you need to be born again. Be born from the water and the Spirit. Water is the cleansing of the sin. And the Spirit is you. Once your sin, which is death, has been removed, you start to have life. And Jesus says, my words is our spirit and life. I came so you can have life and life everlasting. And he goes even further. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And he, even though he is dead, he shall live. This is the difference of religion and the new birth. Salvation is to live after a project of salvation, a project of eternal life. And for this, Jesus started to show these things and speak to him. He said, look, we're born of the flesh, your reasoning, your concepts, but from the Spirit, only the Holy Spirit can do this. So salvation is a project of eternal life where man has an encounter with the, with the Savior, which is the Lord Jesus. And the Savior, which is the Lord Jesus, sends his Holy Spirit to all those who believe in him. All he who believes will not perish, but will have eternal life. If you want another Savior, you might have one. When you have others, it's because you don't have Jesus. Because if you have Jesus, you have everything you need. I am the way. The way. It's his title. The truth and the life. Nobody shall come to the Father, will come to God, will go to eternity, if not through me. Because through Jesus, he gives his spirit. And his Holy Spirit, Paul says, it is sealed with the spirit of, of the Holy Spirit of the promise. Are you listening to me? You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of the promise. You know what the promise is? Eternal life. The world is passing by. We don't know about tomorrow. We are not trying to do a dramatic appeal here. Or to worry anybody. Look. It is not going to be your effort. It's just believe. Believe in the, in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. You and your home. You may believe now. Are you listening to me? Some brothers already know the gospel. Other groups might know it too. But you, do you know it? Sometimes you may have rejected the invitation. Maybe you're just curious that you're listening to programs each and every day, things that you like to listen. But look, you need to be born again. The new birth, it is not through the mother's womb. That's religion. It's something that's impossible. You need to believe in Jesus as your Savior. Nicodemus, you are a master in Israel. You know all things. You know the Bible. You speak very well. You flatter the Lord. But look, you need to be born again. And that is a great blessing. May the Lord bless you all, to all that are listening to us. And we're going to continue. And I would like to leave a word. In the Instagram tomorrow, a little short word 
maintain your your resources open and connected with us. Pray with us. Thursday, we have a day of prayer. We have Friday, a day in which we have a blessing for the families. God is operating in the midst of the household. You don't need my order to be blessed or to receive a cure. Look, you don't need to. Just kneel and your blessing will come in the name of Jesus. It's not the name of your pastor, your religion, or denomination, but in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. Peace, peace of the Lord. The heavens declare the glory of God. Eternal power of the Lord. The heavens, the earth, the seas. All beings Sing your praises, your praise, O oh God, O oh God, you are the great king of the universe, the life, the great author, Lord, the heavens declare the glory of God. O oh God, my King and Savior, O oh God, my Father, 
and Savior. eternal power of the Lord. The heavens, the earth, the seas, all beings sing your praises. Your praise. O oh God, O oh God, you're the great king of the universe. the life, the great author, Lord. The heavens declare the glory of God. O oh God, my King and Savior, and Savior, O oh God, my Father, and Savior. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the love, the incomparable love of God, our Eternal Father, and the power, the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit of Lord Jesus be upon beloved of the Lord and all the people of the Lord from now until always. Amen.